Fab. So welcome to today's webinar. Um, if you've been on any of our webinars before, then you'll probably recognize myself um, as I've been on all of them. So my name's Lottie and I'm part of the student recruitment team here at the Business School. Um, today, uh, the webinar is going to be on sustainability and the world around us as sort of a broad subject. So with us, we've got my colleague Ruta, who's part of the student recruitment team. He's just given us a lovely wave. Um, we've also got our two guest speakers. So Professor Sarah Walker, who is going to be giving a short presentation on their work, and Camilla um, Azamova, who is going to be talking about their internship in the UNSDG team. But we'll talk more about in detail about that in the presentation. We've also got three of our current students with us on the call. So you can see them. They've got their course is their course name next to their name so you can see which course they're studying on so we've got Callum, Veda and Cushy um, they're available at the end when we do our q and if you have any questions for current students um, but yeah I'll, without further ado I'll just get started so bear with me so sustainability at Newcastle University. So sustainability is um, at the core of you know, everything that we do here at the university. Um, and that is reflected in the fact that Newcastle University is actually ranked in the top five UK universities for sustainable development. Um, we're top 25 globally. So if you don't know what that means, um, Times Higher Education do um, a set of rankings called the impact rankings. And those have just happened for 2023. So all of these statistics are as up to date as they can be. Um, they assess over 1,400 universities globally and then rank them um, in terms of the work that they're doing towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so the way that the presentation is going to work today is I'll say a little bit about what we do here in the, in the business school and in the Frederick Douglass Centre um, for sustainability. So those would be when you come and study with us at the business school, those would be the two buildings that you'll be based between. Um, and then I'll hand over to Sarah, who's going to give a little presentation on their work, and then that will be followed by a short presentation by Camilla on their work and internship in the UNSDG team. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, either hang on to them and you can ask us them at the end during our Q&A, or you can pop them into the chat as well, and we'll either pick them up in the Q&A or Ruta might pick them up as we go along if we have a lot of questions in there. Um, but yeah, so... There's a lot of information on this slide. I won't go through all of it, but basically this is just a little bit about what we do in the business school and the Frederick Douglass Center. So those are our two buildings on the Helix site. Um, so we follow the energy policies. Um, the temperatures are always maintained at a reasonable temperature. And then those systems are always switched off outside of core hours. Um, we also use light sen sensors to so that we don't have lights left on or anything like that. Um, we recycle. We often reuse and recycle furniture rather than purchasing new. Um, we use fair trade products where, where available. Um, and we also encourage sustainable travel. We offer staff cycling storage, um, electrical charging points and discounted travel schemes as well. We also limit water waste by offering push button taps. So rather than you know just turning on a tap and leaving it to drip, we have a more sustainable system for that for our staff. Um, and I believe there is also one of those taps in our student hub as well for students to use. Um, we recycle batteries, of course, um, and we reduce the amount of printers um, as much as we can. Uh, we also purchase recycled paper um, and we use water boilers as opposed to kettles because they use less energy. Um, so these are more practical things that happen on campus. Um, so that you can see that obviously in everything that we do from a more practical, low level, all the way up to the broader university level, our intention is towards a sustainable future. So I will go on to the next slide and I will pass over to Sarah, who was going to give a little presentation on net zero in northeast England, but I will let Sarah speak more on that. Thanks very much. Um, so the opportunity to speak today is great. Um, it's nice to get the chance to meet some prospective students and to tell you a little bit about some of the work that's going on at the university around sustainability. And in particular, my interest in the sustainability space is around um, energy, which relates to Sustainable Development Goal 7. So in terms of our approach, We've been looking at greenhouse gas emissions and how to reduce those, particularly in relation to the way that we use energy. And we know that 
we need to be reducing our greenhouse gas emissions quite significantly um, in order to keep global temperatures to something that is livable. We also know that the change needed for this needs to be uh, rapid, so it needs to happen quick and it needs to be quite radical. So we need to be doing different things at scale. And we need to do that globally, but we also have been thinking about how to do that regionally. And we believe that these changes will improve our economy. It will improve our lived environment in the region. It will enable us to do this in a way that is fair and equitable for everybody who lives in the region. And we think it will create new opportunities for employment, for recreation, um, for the way that we, we live our lives. Next slide, please. So when we look at greenhouse gas emissions for the region, and by region, I'm, I mean um, the university sits within the, the northeast of England, and that region runs all the way from the Scottish borders um, up in Berwick, all the way down to um, just south of the river. Uh, the River Tyne, I should say. <laughs> so um, when we look at where the greenhouse gas emissions come from in our region, then a big chunk, the most significant chunk is the dark blue, which is transport. 37% of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from the way that we move around and the way that we move stuff around in the region. And then the next biggest contributor is the domestic sector. So the energy that we're using um, to heat our homes, to light our homes, um, to run all of our appliances in our homes. Uh, heating is uh, about 75% of the uh, energy need in the domestic sector. So most of this is heating rather than from electricity. And then we've got some slightly smaller contributions. So public sector, um, means pretty much um, buildings that are owned or activities that are done by local authorities and other public sectors like the NHS. Um, commercial is the blue bit of this chart and then industry is the lime green at 16%. Um, so in terms then of reducing those emissions, uh, that was 2019. And I chose 2019 to show you because um, 2020 and 2021 uh, were affected a bit by COVID. Um, and so they weren't typical years. Um, but we, over the past um, 20 years in the region, have managed to reduce our emissions by about half, about 50%. Um, but we need to go faster. And so this graph shows us a little bit of some of the government's policy plans and what they mean in terms of um, achieving the government's own target, which is to get to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. So the first line on the far left is where we're at now. And the next dotted line called Committee on Climate Change Budgets is some of the government's current plans out to 2037 that um, have quite a bit of detail behind them as to where we could make savings. Um, and then we've also got some speculative stuff that the government has done to 2050, 2050 net zero plan. Um, and we previously had an 80% plan um, which is quite close to that 2050 net zero plan. Um, so you can see that the government's got some plans moving forward, but actually if we look at what was agreed in Paris as part of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is quite a mouthful, um, then we should be going much faster earlier in order to achieve that. And the Paris Agreement is all about making sure that the UK does its fair share 
Um, and so we need to be um, improving on our current plans if we're going to achieve the goals that we agreed to back in Paris. Next slide, thanks Lottie. So um, at the moment, if we look a little bit further out than 2050 and we said, what will the region look like in the future? Um, assuming either a low emission scenario, which pretty much gets close to 2050 net zero, or a high emission scenario where we miss that target, then what would the region look like? Um, well, in summer, the region's gonna look drier and warmer. And in winter, it's gonna look wetter and warmer. Uh, why is this important? Well, first of all, it's important because remember these values are averages. And so at times in summer, we're going to be experiencing significant high temperatures that would make it difficult for, um, for um, agriculture in terms of what we can grow for food, um, difficult for the ways in which we um, live and work in terms of the, the temperature stress that we might experience. And that's more difficult for older people actually, because older people, um, their temperature regulation in their brain um, it gets a little bit worn out effectively and they don't notice um, if they're getting too hot. Um, and so that's uh, quite important given that we're also expecting to be a society with um, a much greater number of older people um, in the future. Um, but the drier bit's also a concern. Well, we're luckily in the Northeast not having hose pipe bands very often, but we could expect to see um, much more of that in the future and water could become quite constrained as a as a natural resource for us. Next slide, thanks. So what are we doing in the region to try and uh, combat this? So we've come together as a collective. This is universities, public sector and industry to talk about what kind of projects could we do um, to improve things. And we focused on three things. We focused on ways in which we could generate electricity in ways that are cleaner. We've identified projects around heat. So remember we said that um, domestic sector was a big emitter and heat is a big part of that. So we've been looking at how to uh, still deliver heat, but in a way that's cleaner. And then the third area is transport. Transport was our biggest emitter. And so we've focused on transport and ways in which we could um, move stuff around in a way that is cleaner. So on the electricity side of things, and um, particularly offshore wind, uh, we see, because we're right on the coast, of course, in the Northeast, uh, we're, we're very well placed um, close to the North Sea to have lots of offshore wind coming to our shores um, and contributing growth in the economy and jobs. And so this is a potential really strong um, opportunity for the Northeast. And we have the Northeast, in the Northeast, we have the offshore renewable energy catapult based in Blythe, which is about seven or eight miles north of Newcastle. Um, and they're really interested in offshore wind and the ways in which it can support um, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. And then on the heat side of things, um, we've made some good progress in looking at heat networks in the region. And there's some development happening at the moment in Gateshead, which is just south of the university over, over the River Tyne. Um, and they're looking at heat networks. There's a heat network there already. Um, and they're looking at different sources of heat to heat up the water that then flows around a network to provide heat into buildings. And this could create a lot of additional jobs in the region um, because it's a, um, a bit labor intensive in terms of the, the putting the, the heat pipes into the ground to move the hot water around. And on the Helix site, we actually have an energy center and we have a heat network. So some of the buildings 
um, right next to the business school on that site are connected to a heat network. And then on transport, um, we're really strong in the Northeast in electric vehicles. So we have Nissan as a manufacturer of electric vehicles just down the road in Sunderland. We have some real strong interest in the battery supply chain in the region, and this also could be really strong for job creation for us. Next slide, thanks. On offshore wind, uh, one thing to mention is that the largest offshore wind farm in the world is off our coast. It's currently in construction and the electricity connection to shore um, comes in just down the road from Newcastle University at Teesside. There's a second connection into Yorkshire. Um, but the company that is supplying all the operation and maintenance is a company called Equinor, and they have chosen the north of Tyne and particularly uh, the port of Tyne as their base for supporting Dogger Bank. So Equinor is based out of Port of Tyne. It is supporting the largest wind farm in the world, and that is right on our doorstep as Newcastle University. So some really interesting things happening locally in terms of uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and developing clean energy opportunities that enable you as prospective students to then be thinking about those companies that are offering employment, but also potential project ideas that could link up to um, clean energy and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Thanks, Lottie. I'll hand back to you. Fab, thank you so much, Sarah. That was fantastic. Um, so moving on from that, what we're going to do is I'm going to pass over to Camilla, who's going to talk a bit on their work within the United Nations Sustainable Goals team at the university. So again, Camilla, let me know um, if I need to change the slide or anything like that. But without further ado, I will hand over to you. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yes, so I'm Camilla. I just graduated last week, actually, and I studied business management here at Newcastle University Business School. And as part of my um, final year, I took part in the Global Challenges Academy internship. So I was a UN SDG intern and I wanted to talk a little bit more about the projects that um, I did and you could how you can get involved in these types of projects as well. Um, next slide, please. Oh. Fair with. Slight technical. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why. Just bear with me one second. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then maybe do this a bit more manually. No worries. Right. What we'll do instead, because the presentation doesn't want to col um, collaborate right now. If I do this, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Fab. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm sure most of you have heard of it, um, but UN SDGs are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and they're the 17 goals that are on the screen at the minute, and all of these goals are fostering global partnerships towards prosperity and peace. So the internship um, was revolved around how um, getting involved in different projects on how we can kind of raise voices around the UN SDGs, but also contribute towards them. And um, the type of projects were anything kind of specific to each of the goals. So for example, you could have a work on a project that is specifically looking at zero hunger and um, the project is focused on that goal only, but you could also have a cross um, faculty kind of project where you're working across the different goals and across the university with different schools. And um, I included some example projects that I worked on. So um, the director for Japan at British Council, Matt, was visiting the university a few months ago. And then as part of that, um, I organized the Japan UK research event. So we invited different academics across the university to talk about 
what they're doing um, in partnerships with Japanese universities um, focused on UN SDGs. And a lot of that was around aging. So a lot of aging research takes place at Newcastle University, as well as Japanese universities. So kind of looking at that and speaking about it. And then from that, there was a follow up project, which was um, interviewing academics who are collaborating with Japanese institutions on different projects. And then kind of I basically interviewed them and made little video snippets. And then the, snip, the videos were then showcased at the G7 Science Summit um, in Sendai in Japan that happened not long ago. But um, I wanted to share with you about the project that I'm currently working on at the minute, which is quite interesting. Next slide, please. Yes, so it's the UNSG alignment project, and um, I think Lottie mentioned in the beginning, Newcastle University um, has kind of built a reputation regarding its, um, sorry, <laughs> I got distracted for a bit, but yeah, um, regarding its reputation on sustainability um, and the SDGs, but there wasn't a place that um, kind of staff and students could go to, to have a look at exactly what is happening within each of the goals and which projects are taking place within the different schools um, when aligned to each of the goals. So the project was, um, the pro we're looking at that at the minute. So I'm working with another intern who's a UNSGG intern as well and a research associate, Jenny. Um, so it's team of three of us and we're looking at kind of projects happening across the university and compiling that together so looking at producing a document which has um, reflects the university's engagement with all of these 17 goals and then compile a list of contacts that could then be reached out to find out more about what is happening so I'll have three examples of the different projects which I thought were quite interesting that I could share with you um, next slide please so SpudFest um, looks at goal 12, which is responsible consumption and production. And um, the university has a university farm, which is the Nafferton farm. And um, the School of Agric Agriculture have annual crop um, trials, potato crop trials. And as part of this, between five and 20 tons of surplus potatoes are produced. So a PhD student, Alexandra Neal, used her expertise to incorporate a redistribution plan towards these potatoes. So in 2023, in this year, 5.1 tons of potato surpluses were sent to different um, community projects and charities to make sure that the potatoes could then be used again and food waste is not produced. And Alexandra produ um, kind of... Um, proposed this plan to the leadership. So now um, the school leadership is thinking about introducing a surplus management plan into research proposals and to make sure that it's not just a one-off project, but also something that's continued on to make sure that food waste is reduced as, um, in the school. And um, Alexandra also organized a public engagement event called um, SpudFest. So this encouraged the public to reduce their food waste as well. And as part of the project, um, 1.6 tons of surplus potatoes were then rehomed again. Um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, so free sanitary care products. I think some people might have heard about this, um, but this, this is targeting goal six, clean water and sanitation um, specifically. So Newcastle University was actually the first university in England to provide free sanitary care products um, back in 2019. And this has um, continued on. So there are eight dispensing machines across the university. And two of them are, one of them is in the business school and the other one is in the Frederick Douglass Center, which is the um, buildings most of the business school students would be having their lessons in. So this is something that was introduced and continues um, to happen now to make sure that the target is reached. And the last example is, next slide, please. Um, Northeast Solidarity Teaching. So this looks at um, number four, quality education. And this one is more of a student-led um, project. There's a student volunteering project. project. And um, 
it's designed to educate, empower, and integrate the forced migration community in the northeast of England. So they have um, expanded substantially um, throughout the last few years. So now they are running 26 sessions per week, um, which supports 700 um, refugees and asylum seekers each year. And over 600 Newcastle University students are involved um, in this project. So the project looks at teaching English um, through different means, kind of playing sports um, with the asylum seekers and refugees and promoting creativity or even organizing trips um, throughout the Northeast to make sure that the um, refugees and asylum seekers feel integrated into the community and help them um, kind of help transition into this community as well. And yeah, that's all the examples I had. Thank you very much. I'll pass back to Lottie. Fab, apologies for the slight technical um, issues. So yeah, that kind of, that concludes our presentation. Um, so what we'll do now, if we've got a little bit of time left, um, I'll just kind of open the floor to any, any prospective students, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to just pop those into the chat. Um, and yeah, we'll see what we can do. Obviously, if we don't get that many questions, we can always wrap up a little bit early, but don't be afraid to, to you know, ask. Um, and any, any questions that we're able to answer, we will. It's also worth mentioning that this webinar will be, as I've recorded it, it'll be posted onto our YouTube channel as well. So if there's any part of this that you maybe, you know, missed or you wanted to have a rewatch of, um, I will let you know once that's been posted. So while we kind of wait to see if anyone has any questions or anything like that, um, I might just get our business ambassadors to introduce themselves, if that's okay with them, um, and just kind of maybe introduce yourself, say what course that you're studying, um, and yeah, anything, anything else that you think might be relevant or interesting. Um, so I will start with um, Callum, if that's okay. Yep. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. We are a little bit quiet. Um, I'll try my best to be as loud as possible. Um, hi there, everyone. My name's I'm studying international business management and sustainability at Newcastle Business School. So, uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks, Callum. Um, and Veda, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Hi, my name is Veda Shroff, and I'm studying uh, international marketing. I'm completing my post graduation at Newcastle University. Oh, perfect. And then finally, Kushi, do you want to do the same? Hi, my name is Kushi Kadmawala, and I'm pursuing Masters of International Marketing from Newcastle University Business School. And I'm an international student. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, I can see that we've had a question in the chat, so I will read it out. So um, Jagba has asked... Um, I'd like to know if Newcastle University partners with the transport logistics industry in the UK and creates practical programs or problems to solve. Um, Sarah, would you be in a position to maybe answer this question at all? Yeah, thanks for the question. So we do have a research team looking at transport that includes transport logistics, um, both rail and heavy goods vehicles and, and marine as well. Um, so that transport group are a mix of um, business colleagues, marine engineers, civil engineers interested in, in the transport sector. And we also partner up not just directly with industry. Um, we have also some good links with an organization called Connected Places Catapult, and they are um, funded by government to help universities talk to industry and business and Connected Places Catapult has responsibility for doing that from a transport perspective. Um, but locally we talk to Ferguson's, they are a big um, transport logistics firm in the northeast of England um, so they're local to us and they are interested in decarbonisation of their lorry fleet. And so we've been talking to them about possible solutions 
for them as a local um, industry partner. Oh, thank you so much. Um, if anyone yeah. else has any other hi, questions. Uh, oh, hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, hi, this is Jagbir here. I thought I'd just introduce myself and I think the others did too. Um, thank you so much for your response. I'm really keen to speak to this transport partner in the UK and maybe help them with their problem solving. A little bit about me, I'm doing my master's in innovation, entrepreneurship and sustainability from Newcastle this coming September. And I currently work in my family business of transportation and logistics. And we work with the oil industry, mainly Total, Shell, Castrol. And it is the most uh, concerning issue for us, especially in this industry. So I'm really looking forward to our experiences in my time there in the UK. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jack. Um, I can see that we've had another question in the chat. So from Forrest has said that the online series is great, um, but not many students seem to know about it. Um, so where can you get the latest info on these kind of online events? So these online events um, are actually emailed via whichever email you've used to sign up with us. Um, so whichever email that you've used for your university account, um, we send out emails asking students to register for these events. Um, so you should have been sent that email um, and that should have gone to all offer holders as well. So anyone who has an offer with Newcastle University, whether or not you've accepted it or anything like that, the only time it wouldn't reach you is if obviously you've withdrawn. Um, but yeah, these are communicated via email and they are also posted in our postgraduate Facebook offer holder group um, as well. If you aren't in the post postgraduate group, um, let me know, because obviously, again, that would will have been emailed to you um, when when it was set up about, you know, joining the Facebook group because we post some information in there. You know, we post about these webinars, we post links to student blogs. Um, any kind of other relevant information, I can also see in that group that a lot of students kind of connect with other students on their course or other students coming from similar places. Um, and so I can see that there's been some some good groups formed through that as well. So I would say if you're struggling or if you're not receiving these events or you've, you know, you've had this forwarded to you by a friend and that's how you've joined, just to have a double check in your emails because you should have received an email um, detailing all of our webinars. There's two more left this summer. Um, and they're basically, they're, they're on the next uh, postgraduate webinar will be on the Helix site, which is the location that the business school and the Frederick Douglass Center is on. Um, and then the one after that will be focused on women in finance. Um, and those will be happening in the next two to four weeks um, as well as so these happen every two weeks. So I hope that answers your question. Um, but yeah, you should have received confirmation via your email um, about these webinars. So if any of your friends haven't received or they're struggling, um, definitely point them in the direction of their emails and just have a little search in there. I'm sure if you search something like webinar, it should come up. Um, and if they've missed that email, please encourage anyone to get in touch with us um, directly. We have our own email address that I'll just pop in the chat as well. So if you have any recruitment related queries um, or, you know, you're struggling to receive any information, um, it's nubs.recruitment, so nubs.recruitment at newcastle.ac.uk. I've just put that in the chat now there as well. Um, I can see as well, thank you, Ruta. Ruta has put in a link to join our Facebook offer holder group if you're not already part of it. I would really recommend you do that. If, if, you know, even if you want to ignore all the posts, it's, it's a great way to connect with other students as well before you join us. But also there's some really useful information on... Um, accommodation, the region, you know, things to do in Newcastle, lots of stuff in there, really, really useful. So definitely join us if you're not already joined. Can I also add in as well? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, um, when you join up, uh, usually in the induction week, um, a lot of the students create their own little WhatsApp group, you know, just as a, it's, it's a very natural thing for people just to do like we've been part of a whatsapp group and you you create that a lot of the time when you start to make friends in, in the induction week as well so uh the official group obviously would come through the university but you do create your own informal kind of class um uh, whatsapp groups as well that's fab thank you callum yeah if we've got any other questions now is your chance feel free to pop them in the chat
it's looking like I'm not getting many more questions. Um, I will take it that the presentation was just so informative that no one has any questions. Um, but yeah, I don't know if any of our, do any of our business ambassadors have anything, you know, relevant to their course maybe that they wanted to share, if, especially if you've done any modules in the area of sustainability or anything like that. Um, yeah, I, I can jump in again. Um, oh, thank you. The, 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 so if anyone is doing international business management, um, they do three main modules in the second semester, uh, which are really based around sustainability. Um, and those three are kind of on a spectrum. You know, one of them is very philosophical for business. Uh, one of them is very kind of um, practical, so the supply chain side of things, the logistics side of things. And then there's one that you would say that's kind of in the middle that combines the two. So you get a full spectrum of like of how sustainability works within that module. And a lot of that module, you know, obviously a lot of other classes share those modules as well. So yeah. That's perfect. Thank you, Callum. Obviously, myself, I can, you know, tell you all the information about the university, but, you know, the real reason we have our business ambassadors on these calls are so that you have an opportunity to ask any of your questions to some current students who, you know, might have been in a really, well, have been in the same position that you're in right now um, and are in a good position to sort of give you more of a student perspective on any anything that you want to know about. So definitely, if anyone has any last questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I will. At this point, um, pop onto the screen just a little feedback form. Um, we obviously run a few different events. Um, we've done a few different webinars this summer. Um, and if anyone would be interested, I would really appreciate any feedback that you have to give. Um, so if you follow that QR code, um, it's literally, it's a very short questionnaire. I think there's only about three questions. Um, and it's just about, you know, rating your experience um, because it really helps us with these events in the future. You know, if there's anything you feel like we've missed or we could have done better, I would love to hear it um, because it obviously I can implement that in the next upcoming webinars and definitely going forward. Um, yeah, I'll just give us a few minutes just in case anyone else has any other questions. But if not, um, I'll probably end the webinar here. Um, I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a look at that feedback form. Um, but yeah, any questions for myself, for any of our guest speakers today, or any of our student, current student business ambassadors, um, now is your chance. Feel free to ask. well I will probably end the webinar here um again I'll be here for another another minute or two if anyone has any last minute questions but thank you so much for joining us today um really appreciate your attendance and I hope that you enjoyed so thank you I'll stop the recording now as well <laughs>